Hello, today we're building Jim Clark's Lotus 25 from the 1963 Formula One World Championship. This is a Tamiya 120th Formula One kit, it was first tooled in 1997. Now some of the monocoque parts had already been assembled by the previous owner, as it was bought second hand. I painted the external parts in TS43 Racing Green from Tamiya, and then used some Revell aluminium for the interior parts here. I masked along the underside of these pipes on the bottom to uh, paint these in aluminium as well. These extend forward to the radiator, and then you've also got the lower parts of the uh, front wishbone suspension. Test fitted the uh, top of the monocoque like so, and also the engine cover. Many of the decals go from one onto the other, so this is useful to line them up. It should be noted here that if you're doing the 1962 version of the car, many of the races didn't feature the yellow stripe down the middle, so you may want to leave that off if you're doing the earlier versions of the 25. The decals are still pretty good. This went down quite nicely with a bit of micro set and then some UMP strong where it needed to fold. There was a little bit of a crack at the front here, but I was able to sort it out. These circles on the side, the roundels for the numbers, come in two parts. Nice that the line and the text is all joined up. It looks pretty good, if you ask me. And then the bottom of the roundel goes underneath. Lotus Coventry Climax logos on the front are separate, which is useful, although I think that on the early version they would have been yellow instead of black. You've got a choice of numbers. Before the 1973 F1 season, numbers were assigned randomly before each race. Jim Clark used number four when winning the 1963 British Grand Prix. I drilled out holes for the ignition wire. I painted these silver and then black before wiping away some of the black paint to reveal the silver underneath for some of the screws as well as the Coventry Climax text. Like so. Other details were added using some more Revell aluminium and a fine brush. Pretty happy with that. previous owner had started to construct the engine, which I painted in silver with some black semi-gloss details. There are other parts that go together very nicely. There's some small semi-gloss black parts that go on either side. And then I used some of this Tamiya cable. I folded this into a long thin U shape. Then dipped the end into some super glue gel to fit them into the holes. Then bent over the hairpin end to hide them in the middle of the engine. Some other parts will go over those later. A little bit of more glue here really helps with that. Like I say, these will be completely hidden. There we are. Now this section here is made up of three parts and the intake trumpets will go on top of this. find that these blunt tweezers are quite good to hold these parts together and then that simply sits on top and hides those wires. 
The exhausts were done in matte black and then I used some burnt red weathering powder from Tamiya to give them an aged look. The first four are grouped together like this and they go to the uh, furthest in. And then you've got these two which go to the uh, second holes on either side. And then the final hole on either side is a simple S-shaped piece. These will need a bit of reorganizing to fit them all together on top and make sure that the holes are nice and open because you'll need to put the long parts of the exhaust in that later on. Pretty happy with that. Now this steering part at the front, in the manual it says it needs to be green, however I looked at a real one and it was silver. Painted the uh, tanks on the front in white and then gave them a black lid and then the pedals underneath are chrome with some sort of gold pedals. Then there's some more chrome parts which go together to build up the front suspension. I used super glue gel for the chromed parts as the uh, poly cement won't work on those unless you remove the chrome. The fitment is very good here. Looks all right. The brake discs were done in silver with the calipers in a mixture of silver and gold. Then you've got the poly cap which fits into there and then the back of them fits in like so. It's nice that you've got the caliper on both sides as that really makes it easy to assemble these parts. This kind of steering arm here is also from the chrome sprue but with uh, matte black down the center. And then the wheel hubs snap into place on both sides. There's enough stretch and give here to assemble these without much fuss. And there we are, it works. This section here needs to be the same green as the uh, rest of the bodywork. and then you fit the radiator onto the front. The research I'd seen suggested it had a kind of copper around the outside, so I added that paint on. This is Tamiya copper. And then the piping comes back from that. I decided to add some Tamiya tape as a bit of insulation to that. As I'd seen it on some of the uh, real versions of this car. The gear stick was done in wood brown and then with some clear orange from Tamiya over the top it gives it a really nice varnished look. And then you've got these vents which go at the front and fit in quite tightly next to the front radiator. The extra thin Tamiya cement is very useful for parts like this. Now the dials had all of the decals put on the other side and then I chose to use these holes in the rear to add some wiring. These were just out of an old USB cable which had stopped working. Used some super glue gel to fit those into place and then cut them to size and hid the rest underneath this pipe. Now these rear suspension parts need to stay in chrome so remove them from the sprue as carefully as possible. And you'll need something like super glue gel to glue them together. It's worth giving them a test fit first though. The 
the springs had a bit of semi-gloss black at the bottom. I'll add some black panel line accent to highlight the coils later on. And then once all that's in place, you can slide the engine into place with the gearbox at the back. This is a tight fit, but it does go into place quite well. And there's two little sections at the bottom to show you exactly where the engine needs to be. And then there's this, which slips into place underneath the exhaust pipes. Rear brakes go together in much the same way. And then the rear axle is made up of a few parts, some of which need to be left chrome and some need to be painted. Just like before, it's worth test fitting these to make sure you're happy before adding the glue because there's so many chrome parts, they'll need super glue. So it's worth getting it right. Tweezers are very useful for this kind of job. There you are, you see the black panel line accent works really well to highlight the coil on the rear springs. Then you've got the firewall which goes behind the driver's seat. Be really careful with these. If you snap them, they uh, probably aren't very easy to fix, although you could get some thin metal rods to replace them. I added some more black Tamiya cable down the side here and used a little dash of silver to represent the clips. The seat was painted in gloss red, but then I went over the top in semi-gloss clear to give it a kind of leathery look. steering wheel was done in the same way but with silver in the center and then you got the little lotus logo in the middle that goes onto the steering arm and the fits a little tight getting it in but secure once it goes into place and this doesn't need to be glued pretty happy with that Then you've got the intake trumpets, which are all in chrome. As they're deep enough, I found I didn't need any black panel line accent, as you look down into them and they look dark, as is. The exhaust is one piece. As I said before, make sure that those holes are nice and open so that these can be joined together. And then you've got a little supporting arm which goes into the back like so. The wheels were done in Tamiya Gloss Yellow and then I used some Molotow Liquid Chrome around the edge. I was really happy with how this thick nib pen worked for this. Obviously though, Molotow Chrome takes quite a long time to cure so these were left for several days before I put the tyres on them. Also painted the wheel nuts silver, and then it's really nice that on these kits, the uh, Dunlop logos are printed already for you. Two slightly narrower tires go at the front. They look pretty good if you ask me. Now I don't like this intake cover here, so I used these pipe filters, which I bought on Amazon, folded around the edge to make it into that rectangular shape, and this fitted really well over the top. I think it looks much more realistic than the plastic one. You can see I also added these photo etch little screws as they were depicted on the box. And there it is with its wheels. Now you've got the little window here which fits into place like so make sure that you add the bullet wing mirrors first. These are made up of two parts from the chrome sprue 
and very thoughtfully they've provided holes which they fit really nicely in through. No need for glue here as that's going to cause havoc with your clear parts. I did however use a little bit of foam safe super glue to glue the windows into place. Once that was on, this was quite a tight fit, getting it into position. You need to be very careful, and it's also worth removing the uh, engine cover at the back because you need to sort of uh, fit it around the corners of the uh, clear part after that's all together. And there we have it, it's finished. Now for the Bobe score. This kit is currently out of print and it goes online for about £50 or more, which isn't great value. I would give this a 3 out of 5. For assembly it goes together quite well, but the spindly nature of an early F1 kit means it's not for the beginner. I'll give it a 4 out of 5. Accuracy seems pretty high. I know Indicals do some alternative decals and wheels for this. I'll give it a 4 out of 5. Quality is great from Tamiya, as you might expect. This kit's now 25 years old, but it could easily be from the last 5 or 10 years instead. I'll give it a 5 out of 5. As for Legacy, this car won Lotus and Jim Clark their first world championships and was the first ever monocoque construction Formula 1 car. It's an easy 5 out of 5. Therefore, the Lotus 25 earns a very strong 21 out of 25. If you're interested in this car, you could also have a look at the Honda RA272 from 1965. Thanks a lot for watching, please let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.